So here we are. Uh, this is Dane Baird with Keller Williams, and this is Alicia Stoby on camera. Thank you for coming on, and she's with Van Dyke Mortgage. And Alicia, I wanted to talk about how to calculate debt-to-income ratio for two different groups of people. One is the W-2 person who works for a company, gets a W-2, and the other one is for the self-employed person, the 1099 person, and how they're different and what to watch out for. Can you comment on that? Ooh, that is sticky. <laughs> sure. Uh, Debt-to-income ratio is a basic calculation used in the lending market to decide by the lender, and we have government overlays that tell us how we have to decide uh, if the borrower will be able to, to repay the mortgage. So the basic calculation is there's a front and a back end debt to income ratio. The front end is the house payment. So we call it PITI, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, divided by the income of the borrower or borrower and co-borrower, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, then there's a back end debt to income ratio, which is that same principal, interest, taxes, and insurance plus all the monthly debt, so car payment, minimum credit card payment, student loan payment if that applies, and that's the back end debt to income ratio. That's that. The part where it gets sticky is your W-2 and 1099 question. So if somebody's paid W-2, uh, full-time employee typically, and we're going to use that income, so they'll have a basic tax return, maybe not too many write-offs. It really depends on how complex the tax return is. For the actual income number, we're going to use the adjusted uh, gross income that's on the bottom of page one of the tax returns. Sometimes there are some things we can write back in, uh, add to the income if there's depreciation, if they own another home that they're right off, for example. The 1099 is where it gets really tricky because that self-employed borrower or contract borrower, whatever the case may be, typically has a lot of write-offs, maybe their gas, maybe their mileage to travel to and from work for their sales calls, whatever the case may be with that contract or 1099 employee. So they might have a higher 1099, but typically that adjusted gross income is, they can write off a lot if they have legitimate tax deductions. So again, some we can write back in, such as depreciation uh, and things of that nature, but typically um, that's where there's a big discrepancy between what people think they're going to qualify for and what they actually qualify for based on what's uh, the adjusted gross income that they report on their income taxes. So it, it almost sounds like if you're a 1099 and you know that you write off a significant portion of your uh, expenses every year against, against your 1099 income, it almost sounds like if you want a loan, you should maybe meet with your CPA and say, hey, I'm going to want a mortgage for this house purchase or this in, this income property purchase and plan with them to earn more you have to pay more in your federal income tax it sounds like right that's what 1099 self-employed people hate to do right but it almost sounds like you need to plan for this because you see this a lot apparently typically yeah I mean if you're gonna write off all your income you're not gonna be able to use that income to qualify so mm -hmm. and, so and the other thing is too I mean this is typically buying a house is the single largest purchase that most people do once, maybe twice, maybe three times in their in their life. Uh, so it definitely is something that takes planning and, and foresight. And you know, to just roll in this spring and, and try and get a house is great. And come apply. We'd love to work with you. But if you're self-employed, there's a lot more thought that goes into it um, as far as you know trying to get qualified for the house that you you feel like you want to purchase. Sometimes that's where the difference is. We can qualify somebody, but they may not be able to buy as much house as they want. And sometimes that's a two-year process also. Some people um, come in and they qualify right away. They have the down payment. And, and the other thing is, too, it's always a good idea to meet with your CPA and a mortgage advisor that you trust because there are different loan programs. And, and it's true, they, they change pretty often. It's like a moving target. But also you want to know all the different loan programs and then what you qualify for and what the different down payments get you. There's different mortgage insurance, there's upfront mortgage fees, um, uh, mortgage insurance fees and, and things like that, that that factor into the different loan types as well. So so it sounds like Alicia is saying be more thoughtful 1099s. You have to be thoughtful before you apply for a mortgage. So uh, consult with your mortgage broker and consult with your CPA. And Alicia, I want to say thank you for coming on today and spending some precious uh, time with us. And um, how do we get in touch with you? It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah, the best thing to do is uh, you can call our office at 904-371-1965 or go online at closein30days.com. And this is Dane Bear with Keller Williams. And if you're looking for a great house or investment property, you can reach me at 904-534-4516. And thank you for your time today.